are you going? Where's your license? CHP officers see a suspicious vehicle while responding to a report a of drink. shots fired. Four beers? You're going to jail. What? Two armed robbery suspects lead Rhode Island state troopers on a wild and dangerous high-speed chase. An informant's tip takes the Connecticut State Police on an early morning drug raid. These are the real stories of the Highway Patrol. What you're about to see is real. Stories from the files of the California Highway Patrol and other state police agencies across America. Officers are trained to react instinctively to the unexpected. CHP officers Chris Freeman and Al Lopez did just that when they saw a car approaching while responding to a call of shots fired. One of our units is on a stop on uh, Mount Vernon, just south of Highway 58. Well, he's on a stop. He heard numerous gunshots in the area. So he's notified Bakersfield Police Department, and we're going to head down that way and see if we can determine if anybody was shooting towards him or shooting from a vehicle in his location. What the heck? Oh, Watch man, little puppies. puppies are going to get hit. This guy's not even going to stop. <laughs> Come here. Got a license on you? How come we could see him and you couldn't see him? Give me your driver's license. Put your hands where I can see him, guys. Where are you going? Where's your license? Where? In the trunk? In the trunk? How much you had to drink? Four beers? You just ran over a bunch of dogs in the street back there. Oh, yeah, I'm I, I don't think they're home. Yeah. I'm going home. Open it up. Yeah. I'm going home. Open it up. Okay, where's your license at? Put your hands up on the roof, please. Up here on top. Up here on top. Inside, bud. Inside. Right here. The last one is I put a vote. I didn't have You don't have it. A... Hang on a second. There's, there's a holster to get in the trunk back there. Got no, no, no. Where do we got the gun at? There's a holster in the trunk. No, I yeah, no. I'm going to you know. I'm going I'm going to you. 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 I'm Sit down. Sit down. The beggars are waiting for one of us. Stop Sienta with it. No. He has not been searched yet. He has not been searched. We took him down. No, no, none of them have been searched. They're all extremely deuced, but none of them have been searched. We had the shots being fired back over there, and we came over here. These guys are coming out from that back way. Look the other way. Face, face that. Put your hands on your head. I'm going to pat you down for any weapons. Where's the weapons at, bud? Huh? I don't know nothing about no weapons. You got no weapons in the car? There's all kinds of rounds. I don't know nothing about weapons, officer. I don't. I swear to God. This guy, I'm just going to pat him down from his, where he's at. He's too wasted. And it appears to be a 9mm round. We had the call of shots being fired in the area. This is the back way to the area where shots had been fired. Uh, if you're going to leave from that area without trying to get caught, this would be the route to take. This is a car crisscross. So far, everything adds up. We got the magazines. We got one round there. We got the poster. It's a matter we got to find the gun. Either they dumped it when they saw us. They may have dumped it. Once we crisscrossed, you can see that we had an overhead light bar. They were able to tell that's a black and white. We started over here on this side. There it is, right there. That's exactly what he was going for. Bingo. We got the gun. That's exactly what he was reaching for. He was digging in the trunk. I bet it's loaded and ready to go. Well, maybe not. Loaded? No, it's empty. Good job. 
Got it. Sure. You should sit back and think. Good down. Killed two of the toughies, so one injured. Okay, they were probably over. He's been fired. Very recently. You speak fine English? Are you speaking fine English? Okay. Do you have some ID on you? Where's your driver's license? Where in the car? Is it in the trunk? No. Why were you going in the trunk? Huh? What were you going in the trunk for? No, I wasn't looking for it. I didn't get in the trunk. Hey. Well, you first told me your driver's license was in the trunk. There's nothing in the trunk but a gun. I don't know what's in the trunk. That's not my car. It's not your car? You're not drunk, okay? You've, no. you've had a couple beers, but you're... No, I'm just in the trunk. You know, I'm not fine. I'm the gun's going with us, okay? Tell your friend if he wants his gun back, he's going to come talk to me to get back, okay? We're going to handcuff you. You're going to sign your ticket. You're going to get out of here, okay? I can't believe we got to let this guy go. In California, 12025 of the penal code, to be charged with a concealed weapon, it has to be in the passenger compartment of the vehicle. So basically, we cannot charge him with that offense. We ended up releasing him and just citing him for the open containers and not having a driver's license in possession. Our belief is he was probably reaching for the weapon. However, there's no way we can prove his actual intent that he was reaching for the weapon. So this here is a uh, good realization, or it's a good example of why a uh, law enforcement career is so frustrating, because here you've got somebody you know was out in the area shooting the vehicle, and you know when you stopped him he was reaching for a firearm, yet he's going home tonight, and there's no way you can reasonably prove it to a jury. Well, we got one gun off the street, and that's one less gun that can kill a cop. During a traffic stop, probable cause is sufficient grounds to justify a search by law enforcement officers. State troopers Jackie Clark and Joe Williams had that justification outside Forest City, Arkansas. I'm uh, Thomas Cadillac. Got 10 on his license plate, and you can't hardly read his tag number, which is illegal in the state of Arkansas. Step back here. How you doing? Hi. Driver's license. I, I, I don't have them with me, sir, but I got some. You do have them? Step over here. The reason I stopped you, there's 10 on your license plates. Yes, sir. You can't read your numbers hardly. Oh. And if it gets dirty at all, you can't read it at all. If we'll just have a seat in the car. Uh, Mr. Sir. you step back here with me just a minute. Yes, uh, <clears throat> we can't find any driver's license on him. You say yours are suspended? Suspended to December the 17th. Do you mind if we look in your car? Well, you don't mind? Well, I mean, I don't mind. Okay. okay. Well, let me let me read this to you and I'll explain it to you. What this is is a consent to search form saying, okay, if we search your car and all your belongings and stuff. And the reason we do it, we have a lot of drug trafficking and stolen property and things like that. Okay? I mean, but... Why all this, sir? Well, it's just we have a lot of drug trafficking and stolen property. If, if you don't want to give us consent to search your car, that's fine. I, I don't want you to do that. No, I don't because of the need. <laughs> okay. You don't want you may read this to you or you understand? I want to ask any questions? I understand that. Okay. You don't want us to search? Okay, that's that's fine. No problem. He don't want to give us consent. Okay. So, uh, that guy swears up and down he has a driver's license, but he doesn't have any identification on it. His is suspended, but he doesn't have any identification at all. Nothing. I don't have any idea who he is. Not. Here's a 357. They looking real hard at us, Joe. Hands on that car. Hands on that car now. Do it now. Get him on there. Joe, you stay right there. You find something? No, he got a gun. Whose pistol is that? I ain't going no pistol. Huh? Your gun? Here's a push wire for crack. Push wire, I got some crack. Push, you got some crack? No, I got some papers. Good, gracious. Yo, another gun here. National Wild Turkey Federation, Winchester. I bet that's some kind of a uh, limited edition gun. Yeah, boy, this shows to be a Model 1300, 12 gauge Winchester. The gun's stolen. 
Right now, you're trying with no driver's license, possess you a drug paraphernalia. Drug paraphernalia. It's a push wire in there and some rolling papers. Push wire? Yeah. Oh. Marijuana seat, it's black seat, Jake. He has several marijuana seats in the front seat and back seat and stuff like that. And possibly theft by receiving for being in possession of a stolen shotgun. Me? Both of y'all. I didn't know nothing about it, though. Is that your shotgun? Where'd you get it? From where? From a guy off the street. Guy off the street. How much you give him for it? Fifty dollars. $50? Well, then you knew that's probably stolen, didn't you? Well, that ain't no good. Here's a bail bonds receipt, uh, day in October 92 for a possession of controlled substance. So he's been here before, it looks like. Next, stay tuned as armed robbery suspects try to outrun the Rhode Island State Police. Next, on Real Stories of the Highway Patrol. When two Rhode Island state troopers stopped a pickup truck on a hot August night, the only thing they were absolutely sure of was the temperature. On August 20th, 1991, at 10.59 p.m., the Rhode Island State Police issued a radio dispatch of an armed robbery at a local market in Providence. At least two male suspects, each carrying handguns, fled in a white Ford pickup truck. Yep, that's the one. Rhode Island State Trooper James Manny and John Regilio, along with fellow troopers Walter Anderson and John Layden, took up a short post position on the Thurbus Avenue on-ramp just south of Providence. The troopers observed a white Ford pickup truck with one occupant traveling southbound. The driver of the truck was Ernest P. Coat of Fall River, Massachusetts. Hiding in the back were the other two armed robbers, Anthony Medeiros and Coat's brother Richard. Troopers Regilio and Manny quickly caught up with the truck at 11.05 p.m. Code immediately pulled the truck over to the side of the road. Trooper Regilio and Manny exited the cruiser and approached the pickup. Regilio sensed something and told Manny to rack one in. Trooper Manny quickly loaded a shell into the shotgun. Just as they were moving in, the truck pulled out at a high rate of speed. Troopers Layden and Anderson took up the chase. They radioed in that a high-speed pursuit was in progress. The troopers caught up with the truck. As the suspects continued firing, the two cruisers positioned themselves so that they would not cross into each other's line of fire. Once positioned, the troopers let out a barrage of gunfire. Madeiras and Code tried to continue the attack, but the troopers' firepower was too intense. The pickup truck pulled to a panic stop with the troopers right behind them. Coat and Madeiras jumped from the rear of the pickup truck. Coat continued running off into the darkness. Trooper Anderson quickly came up to the driver's side and apprehended Coat. Trooper Manny kept the suspect at gunpoint while Trooper Regilio closed in and took him into custody. I'll cover you. Turn him over. Madeira still had the stolen cash stuffed in his jacket. Both suspects were transported to the Lincoln Barracks. Richard Coat was apprehended early the next morning and along with his brother Ernest was charged and convicted of four counts of assault to murder and two counts of robbery. Anthony Madeiras was charged and convicted of two counts of robbery and assault with a deadly weapon. All three are now serving 60 to 70 year sentences at the Adult Correction Institute in Crampston, Rhode Island. The teamwork that we had that night saved us. We all knew how to act quickly and without even communicating with each other. Once the broadcast was put out and once we put out the broadcast, we were in the chase. We did not communicate with each other at all. We just knew what to do, it all fell together. On May 28, 1992, Troopers Manny, Virgilio, Anderson, and Layden III received the Rhode Island State Police Department's highest award, the Service Ribbon for Bravery and Courage. Okay, go, go, guys. 
Next, you are there. As Connecticut State Police act on an informant's tip, that pays off big time. It's often play a valuable role in the development of a criminal case. The Connecticut State Police were tipped by an informant with enough reliable details to set up this special operation. 690, we should find a guy he called He seemed like controls 690, 610, and other units down the way. All right? We, we couldn't get into the other ones, but we, uh, he's always here. The information came to our attention through one of our informants. All right? Uh, the informant gave us information that the cocaine and uh, crack was being sold in this location up on the terrace where we're going to. Okay, go, go, guys. Okay, the ram is out, all right? The area where we're going is really heavy into crack cocaine and heroin up in that area. Hey, police! What we're trying to accomplish, we hope, by going out this early in the morning, is trying to catch her before they get out on the street and give his supply out to his runners. And hopefully that he's still in the house now, sleeping or just waking up. This man doesn't have any clothes on. Right now, uh, in preliminary search, we found uh, a couple of, probably 10 or 12 crack valves. Uh, and she has a strain on her dress, a small plastic bag, which they use to bag it up. Uh, she's telling me this hers, and this, this is the only thing in the house right now, but we are going to conduct a full search. Okay. Also on the dresser, we noticed already there's a police scanner. Okay, sir, we have a search warrant to search this house for drugs, all right, or narcotics, all right? Got some serious street dudes there. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I got some candy for you. What else we find? <laughs> More marijuana, money, and crack. Looks like a, maybe 100 caps. Some cash, some more marijuana. See, it's nice how we're supposed to just believe everything they say the first time. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's what I'm missing. You want to work the closet for Yeah, yeah. Let's get some more everything. money, some more weed here. I want everything hey. turned over, right? Yep. More money, more weed. No, no. And it looks like about 100 jumbos. <laughs> Good. Very good. Then the dresser bureau, we just found two handguns. We got more dope, too. Okay. And we found some more dope. Two loaded handguns, a box of shells. Looks like some more drugs might be in the far corner there, too. Subject right now is under arrest. He, he won't give me his name. He just don't want to talk. So we're going to remove him from the apartment right now so we can continue our search. Looks like he was going to try to go out the back window when we got there. Base cocaine and cash. Yeah, where are they? Well, they got it. They got it. The oh, they put them on? Nobody searched the pants before they put them on? Yeah. Just got information received when, when he was taken back to the lockup. Uh, the pants he requested to put on to take him out of here. When, when they got back to do the search on him before they put him in the cell, they found some uh, base cocaine and a uh, amount of cash in the pants. So that's another ploy of trying to escape. I'm pretty sure between here and there, he was trying to figure out a way of how to dump it. But too bad. Uh. Realize the devastating cost to our society from the sale and use of illicit drugs. If you are young, say no to drugs and keep saying no. If you're a parent, commit yourself and work with your school, law enforcement, your church, community groups and neighbors to drive this poison and those who deal in it out of our society. Let's work together to rid ourselves of this tragedy.
From the men and women of the Highway Patrol and State Police Agencies of America, thank you for watching.